year for a third year. It's just evident how fast the kids are playing, how well they're communicating, and it doesn't feel like an opening of spring. It feels like you've been in a system and kids are flowing and playing really fast. So um, those are the things that have kind of stuck out to me. Really looking forward to now tra transitioning over to shells, getting some shoulder pads on. We're actually going to practice tomorrow with this weather coming in over the weekend. We're going to try to beat the weather and, and actually practice tomorrow afternoon and, and actually have some better numbers to uh, personnel-wise. So we'll get started uh, tomorrow at 2.50 um, with walkthrough uh, and have a shells practice tomorrow before having spring break and then coming back for four more weeks of spring football. So practice two in the books. Um, walked off the field, no serious injuries, had a hamstring pull with Austin Appleby uh, and Jake Russell. Uh, hopefully we'll get them back here shortly. Uh, any questions? Is it still open to the public tomorrow and everything? What's that? Is it still open to the public tomorrow? Open to the public okay. and everything tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, it'll be the same thing. Just supposed to rain Tuesday. I mean, start raining uh, Saturday morning and all the way through the weekend, and we don't want to lose the day, so we're going to just push it up a bit. You guys don't want to play in the rain? Huh? <laughs> no rain for you? No, we and, and our numbers also, to be honest with you. I, I want to be able to have a, a good, clean football practice, especially going in full pads for the first time. Um, back the, after the second practice, you could already start seeing it getting competitive. <laughs> I think they're ready to bang a little bit. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get it in. I think I saw Josh uh, Inventor Bebe out there today. Was he here? Jo uh, Josh actually um, had a medical procedure done today. Nothing serious, uh, but uh, we'll be back with us after spring. And able to play? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Play, uh, spring is for experimentation, changing positions. One of the position changes is uh, Connor Murphy mm -hmm. from linebacker to uh, defensive lineman. What, what, what's your vision on that? Yeah, just you see that at about 260 pounds right now. And, he, and he's a, a guy that we picture as a Rasheem Green type body. You know, you saw Rasheem play at 275. Uh, Connor's finishing his second year. He's added some a good amount of weight. We anticipate that continuing now that he that he's moved a little bit inside. But he gives us the ability not only to play three technique, but versus those non-zone read teams, quarterback reads, being able to move out to defensive end over top of the top. In. Um, so to be able to go inside and out, we think is advantageous. I know you mentioned a little bit on um, Tuesday, or, yeah, Tuesday, about just kind of the experience that you have now on defense and some of the depth. But like uh, Jordan Iosefa and Brandon Peely, for example, what do they bring out here, and how much does that experience help as you go to spring ball with them this year? Yeah, I, I see several guys, especially defensively, that we have invested a uh, non red shirt year, but basically putting them out in the fire and letting them play. And you see those two guys, those those 20 to 25 reps that Brandon Peely was getting in those games last year has really pushed him forward and to take the next step. He really looks good out here. And Jordan, you saw, like I said the other day, really stepped up in the second half of the season, um, especially versus those zone read quarterbacks, and, and did a great job. Of, of being able to play off the edge and to be able to get him those reps, knowing we were going to lose Uchenna, uh, Uchenna and not knowing, hey, hopefully Porter was going to come back for his senior season, um, to have him ready and ready to go, I think is valuable. Both kids are playing good after two practices. With uh, Jack focusing on his academics this spring, um, and then Jenny Harris convert, right? um, comes out, makes a play today. Is that position open for evaluation? Every position is competing right now. Like I said, we, we will not we will not declare it too deep until we get into game week. And I think that's that's what I told the kids. I said, don't worry if you're with the ones, if you're with the twos. It's about everybody's going to get equal reps. Everybody's going to at some point in time step in there with the ones, and we're going to see how you handle it. But we have several, not only not only corners, but safeties, linebackers that are competing for jobs and, and that's part of spring and part of fall and the best man plays and the, and the guy that's playing the best going into that first game well, and with Jenny the today just with the interception mm -hmm. the Jenny and his interception today. yeah he did he's done a great job you know he's been a nickel for us uh, in majority of time and really did a nice job and you know he's, he's working nickel uh, in the Trojan package he's, he's mixing in at corner uh, when we when we end up going to our base that's our big people um, and, and then you know I see the other guys that are come along. I see, I see Isaiah Langley continuing to get better. Biggie is really playing good right now. Really has had back-to-back -back really good days playing the ball, which is nice to see. And then you got some young guys coming up too you know, that are nice. And good. Great to get Greg out. Greg Johnson out here. Great to see Jakari Godfrey healthy. And you got some more coming uh, coming in fall camp. So that position is getting more solid by the day. And on the defensive side, with the amount of depth 
and experience that you have, it does give you the chance to kind of mix and match and see different type of alignment, alignments and watch how guys interact with one another. Have there been any surprises after two practice when you, you know, kind of mix those combinations together? No, I just, I, I, like, the, I like the way the secondary is playing right now, I, especially, like I said, with the communication. It was just evident on tape, you know, with all the motions and shifts that we have offensively and you're watching it out there and those guys talking to one another, not being mutes, but actually it's saying, hey, close right, close right, hey, no, close left, close left. They're making the calls and the adjustments when, when formations change. And that's a sign of an experienced group. It's a talented group. But I think Dan said the other day we were talking about, you know, this is a group that you can play multiple guys. You can be, you can be really fresh with this group because they do have experience and they are talented. Um, and hopefully that makes us a better defense. What's the plan for Velas in the spring? And then are there any other guys that you're considering maybe Switching the tailback or giving a look there. No, you, you know, if you if you've watched tape from last season, Bayless really came out of the backfield for us. So, I mean, he took that role that uh, Adoree did a little bit of being being able to motion out of the backfield for us and be able to put him in space. He, you know, Bayless is a receiver by trade, but we love to get the ball in his hands any way, shape, or form. He saw it on kickoff return what he could do with the ball in his hands, and he's progressing as a wide receiver. But we have gentlemen that will put in the backfield to try to create a mismatch. Um, you know, right now. Uh, with really only two running backs working, it's good to get, work with what we call our super package to be able to put a receiver in the backfield uh, and be able to bring him out. It gives some other guys some oxygen uh, and get ready for the next period. With a, a young offense and a kind of a front-loaded road schedule next year, mm -hmm. is this defense good enough to say do what the 2003 did when they had an unknown quarterback named Matt Liner who they didn't trust and they go in and shut out? Auburn to start the year. Is this team good enough? I would love, I'll take a shout out right now if you give it to me. <laughs> but is this team good enough to, um, to think those thoughts? Think yeah, I, I, think, I think, Dan, uh, you know, I told our guys the other day in the team meeting that I don't know if there's a true superstar on this team right now. Our strength is in our numbers and, and how talented this group is. But, you, you know, they'll probably be a superstar by the end of the season. But right now, for us, like I told our team, we have to play great team football. And part of being a team football is being able to play great defense and great special teams and don't make the critical errors offensively. Um, and, you know, it, when you end up running the ball, stopping the run, don't turn it over, play great special teams, you know, you're going to win a lot of football games. So if you go back and probably look at our record when we outrushed our opponent, I bet you it's pre and, and didn't turn the ball over more than the other group, I bet you it's pretty darn good. Um, so it, it's something that uh, I think this team is going to have to play extremely well together where, you know, last year you felt offense had a really good day. Maybe defense was off. Then defense had a really good day. And offense, right, this is going to have to be a collective effort uh, between this group to get to the get to where we want to go. Yeah, as you're evaluating um, the quarterback competition, and we understand that you're not going to make a decision until mm -hmm. summer, <laughs> but um, how much do you observe the interactions between the quarterbacks and T. Martin as the offense coordinator and, and the confidence that he exudes knowing that he's the only voice right now that's, you know, at that position. Yeah, definitely. I, I think one of the things that, that I lean on is both T and Brian Ellison and, and, and to watch them coach the position, um, to watch me in their meetings and listen to what they think of each quarterback at this time. I've, I've stressed to both of them, evaluate, get them better. But this is really an educational time for both of them. I don't want them thinking, oh, God, I made a bad throw. Uh, did that cost me the job? You know, I want them to try to get better from – practice one to practice 15 how much progress can we make that's all I'm focused on right now can we get those kids that are, that are practicing right now to where they could play on Saturdays you know because they don't have a lot of reps and they've got so much progress that they need to make what did you see today um, to, today, I actually, you know, Jack got some first team reps, which was nice to see. It was nice to see him pull the trigger. He made some good anticipatory throws. I, I thought letting the ball go, not seeing things open, but, but letting it go, made a great decision on the zone read early in team run. And you can see his speed and athleticism, just like Maddie's. They're, they're both kids that if you give them an inch, they can go the distance. So it was nice to see that also. But both kids have had, had, had nice days. We had a couple turns 
turnovers, um, two turnovers at the position that we need to clean up. But for two kids really feeling it out, I, I'm, I'm liking where their confidence is. They don't look scared out there. They don't look timid. They look confident. And, you know, um, they're being coached by two of the better coaches in the country, I think. And they'll progress each and every day. All right, thank you, Coach. All righty, guys. Thanks. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate yeah. it.